Hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to work on some systems of dis differential equations and we're going to pretty much actually apply them to a real life situation. So, if you had two tanks and it was filled with salt water and you were pumping in 20 gallons per minute of fresh water um, in this tank which is 100 gallons but that was also flowing that water was also flowing at this rate, 30 gallons per minute, into tank 2, which is 200 gallons, so twice the size, twice the volume, sorry. And then at the same time, you're also having 10 gallons per minute flowing back in the other direction. Um, and you also, at the end, have 20 gallons per minute flowing out. Notice how these two are the same, but what differs are the rates in between. So, you can set up a system of differential equations to solve. Um, so we're going to let x1 be the volume, or the pounds of salt in tank 1 at a certain time, and x2 equal the pounds of salt at time t. Okay, so to make life simple, all you got to do is to find the rates, you do rate in minus rate out. Um, and obviously a rate is a function of time, so you're at a function of something over time. So, what you have is, we have pounds of salt, right? So, you're going to have pounds per minute as your rates. So, we are got to figure out what's coming in and what's coming out. So, let's look at this again. So, what's coming into tank 1? 20 gallons per minute, right? What's also coming into tank 1? 10 gallons per minute. Okay, so we're going to have to look at that. But what's leaving is 30 gallons per minute. So, let's keep that in mind as we solve the problem. So, we have 20 gallons per minute coming in, but remember that um, we are measuring this uh, pounds of salt. That's fresh water. So we got to multiply that by the, I guess, zero pounds of salt um, per gallon. And that comes from here. Um, remember, we're measuring the concentration of salt, not uh, just water in general. So that's where that comes from. What else is coming in? We said that the 10 gallons per minute, right? So, then you add 10 gallons per minute. But now you want to know what the concentration of salt is at that time. So concentration, if you remember, um, is that is the volume in there over the total volume. So the total volume in the tank is 200 gallons for the rate um, coming in from the second tank, right? Yeah, second tank. That's why it's 200 gallons. Um, but we don't know what that is, and we know the concentration, as we said, of salt in tank 2 is x2. So then you have that. But then you got to minus the rate out. So this was all rate in, but now we also have to subtract the rate out. Um, since this is multiplied by 0, I'm just going to simplify that and make it 0 so I have enough space to write in the rate out portion. So now that we're trying to find the rate out, we're going to be subtracting because it's leaving the tank, right? So what's leaving from tank 1? Um, 30 gallons a minute, right? But what's the concentration? So that's going to be um, x1 because it's leaving out, but we don't know at what concentration. So that's the first um, part that we did. We found the rate at which the uh, water or the salt water is leaving versus when it's coming out, uh, in and out, so yeah, okay, blah. So you're subtracting what's coming out, obviously, because it's, it's leaving, and you're adding what's coming in, because it's coming in, add addition, right? Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for um, the rate leaving and entering x2. So for x2, um, let's calculate what's coming in first. So, what's the only thing coming into X2? Well, that would be the 30 gallons per minute, right? So, that would be your 30 gallons per minute at X concentration of salt. So, then we got to calculate what's coming out because we have the 10 gallons per minute leaving and you also have the 20 gallons per minute leaving as well. So, to figure that out, we have to subtract, right, since it's right out. Okay, so I plugged in the rest and just to keep in mind, we figured out that 10 gallons is leaving and 20 gallons leaving per minute, right? Figure that out. Um, 
but you have to account for what's which tank that's coming from. So the 10 gallons per minute was coming from the 200 gallon tank, which was tank two, and the, it was also leaving the two, the 200 gallon tank. Um, keep in mind that this, yeah, that's it. Um, this was coming from one of them was coming from a 100 gallon tank. I thought, oh yeah, right here. So this came from the 100 gallon tank. Um, yeah, okay. So. Um, this was the rate in, and this was the rate out, and the purple is the signifying the subtraction for out. Um, so now you have your two differential equations, and um, pretty much there was. They also in a problem they might give you initial conditions. So let's just say the initial conditions are time one, the first tank starts with forty, and this or time zero. And at time zero, this one starts with the hundred. Tanks two starts with the hundred. So then, you would get equations that would look like this. And there's your initial conditions again. Um, and now you have um, systems of differential equations. And if you want to go into the math portion of it, like actually solving it, like that was only set up. That was only set up. Now, if you want to solve, um, you would. When by solve, I mean try to see if there's like an equ equilibrium point. So I'll just put EQ, equilibrium point. Um, so you would find uh, something went wrong, but hold on a second. So yeah, you'd find the determinant um, using the Jacobian, and then you would find the eigenvalues. Um, so I'm just going to tell you what the eigenvalues are. Like, well, actually, let's think about this. If the eigenvalues were both negative, which they are, um, because, let's see, leaving, right? Okay, so they're negative. If you have two eigenvalues that are negative, then you'd have a stable equilibrium, right? It's stable. Therefore, it's stable. Um, and that's because over time, eventually, all this salt water is going to be drained out and you'll be left with only fresh water because salt water is always leaving but fresh water is always coming in so eventually it'll reach a point of equilibrium and there will only be um, there'd be a balance um, so that's pretty much the setups and then the applications now um, that'll be it for now if you want to pause the video um, but I'm going to keep going and talk about some more applications that you could actually use in medicine. Okay, so if to, in medical terms, um, if you're inputting something into the body, you can think of the body as a tank. I'm just trying to relate it back to the previous problem. Um, and what are you putting into it? A dose of medicine, say um, the dose is four milligrams, um, and you're putting that into the body and they're trying to figure out how much is in the urinary tract. Um, and you figure out that there's a correlation um, of the rate of the of the rates, um, and then you define those correlations to be x1 and x2, and then you get your system. So, if you want to figure out how much of the dosage is affecting the urinary tract and at what rate, you can figure that out. Um, say the excretion rate was given to be 0.3, then you can set up your um, matrix here, and from there, since this is a since there's a zero in that diagonal, therefore your eigenvalues um, are the main diagonal, which is a cool little trick so you, don't have, so you can do less work. So you get your eigenvalues, and then just to save time, um, I'll compute the eigenvectors real quick. So for the first one, I got the first, the first eigenvector to be 1, 1. And now for the second one, since this eigenvalue is zero, um, your x1 would be zero, so x2 would be any number, it can be anything uh, that you want it to be. So what's the simplest number you can choose? Well, one, um, to actually make a vector. Okay, so now you'd use the general solution, which is c1 e to the lambda t vector 1 plus c2 e to the lambda t uh, vector 2. And using the values that we computed here, so here's our eigenvalues, and here are our eigenvectors, we plug it into the general solution. So this would be our general solution, and then next you'd have to plug in the initial conditions. Um, 
to do that, and those were given. So then you'd solve for your constants with your initial conditions given. And remember, e to the 0 is 1. Um, and since, remember, these are actually two equations in one. If you separate um, and kind of think of that line as separable um, there to see it. So you would have your constant, and this is at time 0. So you plug in 0 into there, and e to the 0 is 1. So that means you'd just be remaining with your first constant. Um, and since we're multiplying the top, you would get times zero, then you'd have plus zero, and then you would have the same thing, your negative constant plus your second constant. Since C1 is equal to four, four, you plug it in there, you'd find C2 to equal four, and then your general solution now, or not general, so your specific solution is this. Um, so, we just figured out what our constants were, and plugged them into the equation. And now, remember, I want you guys to see that this is two equations, so let's split it apart real quick. So split up, the equations would look like this. Um, and to see that better, again, um, four times, or like, look at that imaginary line, I guess, um, and see that four times zero is zero, so you're adding zero to the first equation here, so technically there's a plus zero. And that's where the plus 4, 4 times 1 is 4, remains here. And then you simply multiply these separately, and one of them is negative, one of them is positive. Okay. So those are the two separate equations. Now, they might, in this problem, it says something like this. Show that x1 of t plus x2 of t is equal to 4. Well, it's actually quite simple. If you add these two together... Right, that's what they want you to do, add them. These would cancel, and therefore, this statement is true. This would be left over, right? So, what does that mean? If I put in, initially into the body, two milligrams, or two doses, um, then that means there would be two doses left over to make four in the urinary tract. If I started with three doses. That means there would be one dose in the urinary tract, because that equals four. Any two numbers that add up to four, whatever you input, this output is going to have to equal, is going to have to be equal to four. Um, so it could be like 2.7 and 1.3, something like that, right? Um, so that shows you just how simple you can take a complex idea, or take, um, a complex idea, do the math, and get something simple out of it. Um, this is what mathematics can be used in medicine, um, and I just think that's really cool. So I hope, hopefully this kind of enlightened you in terms of how you can actually use um, your differential equations. Um, just imagine, everything goes back to the tank. Uh, just imagine everything as a tank or a system, just to simplify everything so you can get the big picture, and then once you get your results, um, like this, you can analyze what those results mean.